Well, hello, friends in ADHD. It's Russ Barkley, back with another commentary on ADHD, this one discussing the overlap of bipolar disorder and ADHD, as well as the frequent confusion between the two disorders, particularly in diagnosis. Because this is an extensive amount of material to cover, I've broken it into three parts for you. This first, we're just gonna talk about symptoms and where they overlap. In part two, I'll talk about the percentage of comorbidity between the disorders, as well as some diagnostic tips. And then in part three, I'm gonna cover some basic management recommendations. So let's get started with part one here. I'll uh, tee this up for you. And let's talk about the symptoms of bipolar disorder and how they could be confused with ADHD. As you know, bipolar disorder is a very serious disorder, uh, originally thought to be a form of schizophrenia, but decades ago was distinguished from schizophrenia or the psychotic disorders because of its cycling or bipolar nature, uh, as well as the fact that there often was an absence of hallucinations and usually delusions, though not always the case with that second set of thought disordered symptoms, delusions that is. So let's go down the symptom list for bipolar disorder very quickly, and we can see why it is often confused with adult ADHD. In fact, in my experience over the past few decades, the most common misdiagnosis of an adult with ADHD was to instead call them bipolar disorder. And we could see how ADHD symptoms alone might trigger the symptom criteria cutoff for bipolar disorder just by virtue of having adult ADHD. So let's take a look at the manic symptoms. Now you can see here that the symptoms of elation and grandiosity, uh, often associated with inflated self-esteem, those are pretty classic bipolar symptoms and are not typically seen in adult ADHD. But look at the next one, excessive talking. Now in bipolar, this is not just excessive talking as we see in someone with ADHD, where they just talk a lot. Instead, the speech of the individual is pressured. Uh, by that, we mean that the individual simply can't get the words out fast enough to convey the ideas that they have in their head about whatever topic they are uh, obsessed with at the moment they're in a manic episode. So it's somewhat different in the sense that this press of speech, the urge to get language out is very obvious in the bipolar patient, whereas in ADHD, it's just a lot of talking. Now, racing thoughts and flight of ideas are not typical of adults with ADHD. Now, let's qualify that. A sense of mental restlessness, mind wandering, distracted thinking, those are more typical of adults with ADHD. But in bipolar disorder, the racing thoughts are truly racing. Ideas are going through the individual's head very rapidly. They all seem to have meaning or significance. They're skipping from one idea to another to another very quickly. This is what is called flight of ideas. And that's not going to be so classic of adult ADHD. But notice the next symptom, distractibility. Both disorders are often plagued by distractibility. How might they differ? Well, often they don't, but the distractibility in bipolar disorder is often episodic, occurring during the manic episodes, but not necessarily during the uh, recovery or period of remission between cycles. Now, the decreased need for sleep is characteristic of bipolar disorder. The individual just doesn't seem to need an awful lot of sleep. They may stay up all night long, several nights in a row, and not appear to be fatigued at all. Adults with ADHD often have sleeping difficulties, and they can include insomnia or difficulties falling asleep. But they often experience fatigue from this limited or disrupted sleeping. They often have daytime sleepiness as well and are often inattentive during the daytime because of their sleep problems. So adults with ADHD need 
their sleep, whereas the bipolar patient often seems to get by with very little sleep. It's that word need that is distinguishing the two disorders. Now, in adult ADHD, we see a lot of hyperactivity. The individual is often going from one uncompleted activity to another, to another, skipping across activities and not finishing what they start. In the case of bipolar disorder, what we see is increased goal-directed actions. They may have a project that they're working on, and they may dedicate all of their high energy into that goal, that project, that work. Sometimes this is seen in social settings, or it's seen in hypersexuality, but it can also be seen in work. So we know that many of the great poets, as well as composers, often had bipolar disorder. And they could stay up and write poetry or write symphonies or write novels or paint or whatever the artistry is that they're involved in and do that for days. So there is this incredibly focused, goal-directed action, often interfering with their sleeping. We tend not to see that very much in adult ADHD. There can be some hyper-focusing on rewarding activities, but it doesn't have the intensity or the duration that we see in bipolar disorder, in my opinion. Now, the excessive involvement in activities that have a high potential for painful consequences, well, that could be associated with both disorders, couldn't it? We know that adults with ADHD engage in a lot of risk-taking, that they speed with motor vehicles, that they seem to be sensation or novelty seeking, that they prefer activities like sports or um, avocations, hobbies, that seem to give them a lot of stimulation. So whether that's X Games or skateboarding or whether it's skydiving or speed skiing or racing dirt bikes, the individual enjoys these sensation seeking activities. So in bipolar disorder, we might see the same thing, but we may even see it to excess, well beyond what we see in the adult with ADHD. Individuals with either disorder may engage in impulsive buying, but in the case of bipolar, during the manic episode, they may go out and spend themselves into serious debt with this uh, this impulsive buying. We also may see them being very sexually indiscreet and hypersexual, and that is having sexual encounters with people with whom they have little, if any, acquaintance. We don't tend to see that quite so much in ADHD, where we may see some impulsive sexual risk-taking, but not necessarily to the degree that we see in bipolar disorder. Notice that where the disorders might have overlapping symptoms. They seem to be much more intense in people having a manic episode than in ADHD. So the DSM-5 requires that you have to have at least three or more of the symptoms on this list to qualify as having manic episodes. And as you can see in the highlighted yellow terms here, symptoms that I've uh, indicated, uh, there are enough symptoms from adult ADHD to trigger that threshold, particularly in the clinician who's not very discerning of ADHD from bipolar disorder. Maybe they don't have a lot of experience with individuals with ADHD. And so they may tend to confuse the ADHD symptom with this bipolar list. But again, intensity of symptoms and severity can often be a helpful guide. And then there are, of course, the symptoms here in white that are not overlapping with adult ADHD. And in essence, we would then say, focus on those symptoms more than on the distractibility, uh, the mental restlessness, the hyperactivity, the high energy. Those are not going to be very distinctive between the two disorders. But the mood changes, the grandiosity, the elation, the racing thoughts, flight of ideas, what appears to almost be psychotic-like thinking, and the decreased need for sleep would help with the differential diagnosis. Now, let's move on to the depressive episodes symptom list. An individual needs to have five or more of these symptoms within a two-week period period 
to qualify as a depressive episode. And look at the top one in yellow, irritability with depressed mood. That, of course, is mandatory for diagnosing a depressive episode. Let me just back up for a moment. Now, both disorders, ADHD and bipolar disorder, might manifest irritability. But in the case of bipolar disorder, it's much more extreme. The individual may be prone to aggression, to rage attacks, to extreme temper outbursts, to destructive behavior. So in addition to just having problems with emotional control, this irritability can be marked. And the depressed mood isn't just being demoralized over some of the failures in your life. It is instead a clear form of depression as manifested by some of the other symptoms on this list. So once again, severity and extremeness of symptoms might help in the differential. Now, loss of pleasure and uh, or interest, what we often call anhedonia, this too is mandatory for diagnosing a depressive episode. This is not characteristic of adult ADHD. However, the next one, weight loss or gain, might be particularly weight gain, but it can be distinguished as being related to very impulsive eating so that the individual is making impulsive choices about high carb, high sugar uh, diets, uh, and it's more toward the impulsive binge eating kind of weight gain. Whereas in the case of depression, the individual seems to be eating in order to make themselves feel better. Or, as pointed out here, they may not be eating much at all and suffer weight loss. Now, both disorders experience insomnia, so that's not going to help us with the differential. But hypersomnia, its opposite, where the individual is sleepy most of the time and sleeps for long periods of time, is less characteristic of adults with ADHD. Yes, they might have a little bit of daytime sleepiness or tiredness because they're not sleeping well. Uh, that is, if they have the disrupted sleep that about 40% of adults with ADHD have. But this sleeping for excessive periods of time is more characteristic of depression than of adult ADHD. Psychomotor agitation, which means that the individual is pacing and hand wringing and upset and appears to even be emotionally agitated, much more likely for bipolar disorder and is different from just hyperactivity and restlessness, again, by its extremeness. Now, the psychomotor problem could be the opposite. It could be psychomotor retardation, which is lack of movement, passivity, sitting still for long periods of time and staring and so on, so that the individual shows an under activity, often to an extreme. Well, you know, that's not classic of adult ADHD. So that would go more with bipolar disorder during a depressive episode. Fatigue can be seen in both disorders, so it is much more commonly associated with depression. Feelings of worthlessness, again, it's the extremeness of the symptom. People with ADHD often report feeling demoralized because their life isn't going well. They're experiencing more failure than other people are at work, in educational settings, in social settings. But it's not an extreme sense of worthlessness, as we might see in the depressive episode of a bipolar patient. The decreased concentration goes with both disorders, however, doesn't it? And then finally, thoughts of death or suicide go with the depressive episode, not with adult ADHD. Now, that said, adults with ADHD who are experiencing depression may have increased suicidal thinking, but that's being driven by the depression, not by the adult ADHD. Once again, as on the manic list, on the depression list, you can see there are enough overlapping symptoms between the two disorders that a clinician not well-trained in adult ADHD might well see these symptoms as symptoms of bipolar disorder, when in fact they could be explained by adult ADHD. I think the difference, once again, is severity of the symptom.
rather than one disorder has it and the other one never has it. So there's some overlap here between the two disorders. Okay, enough about the symptom overlap, but I hope that you can see why for many years, adults with ADHD often were not diagnosed with ADHD, but might be diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Now, that doesn't mean they didn't have bipolar disorder. As you know, the disorders can overlap. We'll talk about that in the next part. But what we have seen is that there was a, a propensity to view ADHD symptoms as bipolar symptoms. Hopefully, now that clinicians are getting more training in adult ADHD, they can begin to distinguish between the symptoms of one disorder and the symptoms of the other. As I'll talk about in the next presentation, one way to get around that is in bipolar disorder, focus on the mood symptoms and not on the inattention, the high energy, the distractibility, and even the impulsivity that may go with both disorders. All right, thanks for joining me for this video. I'll be back soon with part two, where we'll talk about the percentage of overlap between the two disorders and some differential diagnostic clues besides those I've mentioned here. All right, everybody, thanks for joining me. I hope you found this informative. I'll catch up with you in the next video very shortly. Take care and be well. Bye for now.